A very warm welcome to the Tuesday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well today so far. This is the two-meter temperature anomalies across the European continent for the month of May so far. So uh, through the first half of the month, cold across the central and eastern areas, warmer than average across the bulk of the UK, Ireland, Northern Ireland and southwestern portions of Europe. Uh, so a high so far of 22.6 Celsius in the UK. You have to go all the way back to 1985, the last time the UK um, had a temperature so low for this time of the year. Um, but it looks as if we are going to see a continuation of, of relatively fresh conditions over the next few days, warming up gradually as we progress towards the upcoming weekend. And then there is some indications that we may see some appreciable warmth towards the end of the month. So stay tuned for more on that in just a second. But certainly um, over the last 24 hours or so, this is the one day two meter temperature anomaly for the continent. This is off weatherbell.com. And you can see here, um, the only parts of the UK that's been warmer than average has been the Northeast and Eastern Scotland, distinctly below average across the bulk of England, Wales, particularly through the Midlands, East Anglia, Southeast, and indeed parts of Ireland, northern portions of Iberia, gone is a very, very warm, uh, you know, mid-30s that we were seeing a couple of weeks ago. That has now been wiped out. We are holding on to some summer-like warmth further south across Siberia, you know, southern Portugal, southern Spain, still temperatures into the high 20s, low 30s, you know, kind of slightly above average for the time of the year, but nothing significant. Uh, but certainly across northern and eastern portions of the Iberian Peninsula, below average, firmly below average across France, low countries, Central Europe, this very uh, same area that's been bombarded. And certainly if you live in Italy or adjacent countries, we have got a world of heavy rainfall in the forecast for the next few days here. So a very messy picture if you happen to be in this region of the continent. And it has been a fairly wet, cool spring overall uh, in much of Europe here, which is quite interesting. It'll be interesting to see what takes place during the first half of the summer. But this is the GFS accumulated precipitation. And you can see here, this is Italy. It's a little bit hard to make out because of the colours and everything seems to be kind of mixing together. But uh, this is, say, uh, Italy, uh, the Balkan region here into parts of Greece. But uh, some very significant rain totals you know, between now and uh, the early portion of next week, as you can see here, uh, some local areas, especially elevated areas, could see upwards of 150 to 200 millimetres over a 24 to 40 hour period. That is going to cause flash flooding. You'll get scenes possibly in some villages and towns, cars running down the street and whatnot, gale force winds on the coast, and at high elevations, we could see heavy snowfall as a result as well because the air is rather chilly over this region of the world at the moment current temperatures as of recording we do have quite the contrast over europe at the moment so southwestern iberia at the time of record so this is 5 30 in the evening we've only got 15 16 14 13 across the northern half of spain uh, southern portions of france of course down across say uh, southern portugal southwestern portions of Spain, 26, 27, 28 Celsius, as you can see here, central portions of the continent, Germany, Poland, into the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Austria, Switzerland, northern portions of Italy, temperatures a good 10, 12 Celsius below average. Meanwhile, scoot over to the east, through parts of Turkey, we're seeing temperatures of heat wave conditions. Greece and Turkey, low to mid 30s in this region of the world, Overnight minimums have been incredible as well. Temperatures into the high 20s for minimums, as well as I think 24 was a, a high, uh, uh, sorry, an overnight minimum in a couple of spots in Greece last night. So quite interesting stuff as well. A couple of places in Greece also, the temperature did not get below 30 Celsius uh, until the early hours of the morning here. Um, and we've been holding on some warmth across the uh, southern portions of it. Of Scandinavia as well. Western Russia and uh, these Eastern Bloc countries have been fairly warm as you can see here. 
but yeah, very messy conditions. Like I say, if we look at the overview chart of uh, the model here, uh, let's go back to the current setup. So we've got a 997 miller millibar area of low pressure over eastern portions of uh, of Italy. That is cycling some um, moisture off the Mediterranean basin and ramming it up against the coastal mountains here of Bosnia, Croatia, um, and up into the northern portions of Italy, as you can see here, high elevation snow uh, further north, as you can see. So, like I said, I made mention of a potential uh, warming trend. Now, of course, we've had almost all spring long uh, a fairly strong area of high pressure centered to the northern half of the European continent, uh, you know, lower heights further south, hence why we've had cooler wetter conditions further south warmer drier conditions further north so even the uk drier across scotland as opposed to england wales and southern ireland uh scandinavia as well but of course central portions of the continent germany poland and into the alpine region has been pretty cool and with above average precipitation looking at the gfs this is off tropicaltidbits.com, and you can see here this is the 500 millibar anomaly chart here. So, uh, significant below average heights across uh, the central Mediterranean, as you can see here. Area of high pressure in the means to the west. So, of course, with the position of that high to the west of the UK and Ireland, we're pulling our air in from the Atlantic. So, it's a kind of west to northwestly air stream at the moment, keeping the temperatures average to slightly below average. If we look at the UK temperatures here, you can see um, that the temperatures are nothing really to write home about for the time of the year. Like I say, 22.6 is the maximum we've seen so far this year. And, uh, you know, that is relatively cool for the time of the year. 11, 12 Celsius across the north, as you can see here. 15, 17 in Central Belt. And then 15, 16 to 18 Celsius across southern areas of the uk here so nothing particularly warm really over the next day or so but uh, if we look at the go back to the chart here you can see here uh, and this is the ensemble so this is the the collection of all the runs merged together to create this ensemble you can see here that we've got this area of high pressure kind of still hanging to the west of the uk so therefore we maintain this kind of west and northwestly flow that limits the temperature of course but as we play through the early portion of the week, you will see that in the means, it actually strengthens uh, into the early portion of the weekend. And that area of high pressure kind of topples its way in over the British Isles itself. Notice here the trough that's currently over Central Europe. That's now back in towards Iberia. So we're going to continue to keep things cooler, wetter, more unsettled in this region of the world. Very interesting indeed, of course. But then it's as we press even into the early portion of next week, you notice here we've got the high pressure over the, the low pressure, but the, the core of that high remains to the west of the British Isles, which is going to continue to limit the temperature slightly. But it's as we progress from about the 25th onwards, this is where it gets rather interesting because you notice here that the GFS ensemble is indicating the buildup of pressure the strengthening of the high pressure over Scandinavia, maintaining that negative, if you notice, further south. So maintaining cooler, fresher, more unsettled conditions, uh, you know, spells of rain, thunderstorms, you name it. The central uh, portion of the Mediterranean basin will have that drier and warmer the further north you go. Now, as this area of high pressure continues to, you know, flex its muscles, it starts to uh, strengthen what we're going to start to see is the potential of that high strengthening. And therefore, we could essentially see the very end of May, seeing those temperatures starting to notch up more of a level than we'll, what we've seen so far. So 25, 26 Celsius, believe it or not, in the northern half of the British Isles as we progress towards the end of the month, based on what I'm seeing. Now, to back this idea up, we'll look at the ECMWF. And you can see here, if I can get to the right model, that is, it always helps. Um, bear with me just a second. Sorry about this. Um, so if you notice here that, um, let's go back to the, let's go back to the upper air pattern here. So this is the 500 millibar height anomaly chart here. You can see here what takes place. So let's go back to the current setup. 
and let's play it through the loop and you can see here that the the model indicates that this area of high pressure over Scandinavia strengthens so there you go same idea as the GFS ensemble and therefore we could start to really strengthen that sinking motion over the northern half of the British Isles so the warmest temperatures been in the north versus the south as we progress towards the end of the month now if we look at the uh, surface temperature anomaly here uh, again if I can get to it I do apologize I'm gonna just kind of working on this at this uh, time of recording so this is actually the seven day increments right so it's not the ideal chart that I was hoping to show you here but if you notice here we'll go back to the current setup well below average across the northern half of Iberia through the Pyrenees, France, low countries, central portions of Europe. Very cool compared to average. Now this is, bear in mind, this is the upcoming seven day period. Still remaining below average across East Anglia. Average conditions, the bulk of England and Wales. Warmer than average, north and eastern Scotland through the central belt, parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland. Warmer than average over the next uh, seven day period. Now this is skipping out to the four four five to twelve notice here the warmth starting to build across the northern half of the, the continent below average further south so this is backing up the gfs ensemble this would certainly be quite interesting to see now we skip back so this is the warmer than average conditions starting to show towards the end of the month and into the early portion of june now let's go back to the gfs ensemble so let's just look at the anomaly chart one day increments and uh, we can see what is taking place so well below average bulk of england wales ireland northern ireland at the moment near continent as you can see and then as we continue to play through and you know we we'll maintain that relatively fresh theme warming up slightly as we progress towards the weekend as you can see here still staying cool across southwestern portions of europe warmer than average now notice here scotland Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scandinavia, below average, further south and east. But it's as we progress towards the end of the month here, folks, this is what happens. Now, what happens is when we've got an area of high pressure and control, especially with relatively cooler in the middle levels of the atmosphere, you have warming by day, strong warming at that, strong UV, of course, at this time of the year. But then, of course, with fresher, clear skies, light winds, and the air mass being dry, that then means that we have the ability for the atmosphere to warm up strong, but also cool quickly as well. And that is what's going to happen. We go from below average to above average temperatures across the UK, thanks to that um, setup. But watch what happens as we progress, particularly so from the 25th onwards, we're starting to warm things up in a big way across Scandinavia, the continent, the UK but specifically the northern half of the UK as we go towards the end of the month. So notice here, this could be the indication of the first real warm-up of 2023. So watch this space. Uh, I think we have got some warming taking place as we go towards the end of the month. Uh, also, I am, this is actually the work in progress, the uh, summer forecast of 2023 giving you a little sneak preview as to what I'm going to be talking about. So looking back at the summer last year, remember we had 40.3 Celsius recorded at Coningsby in Lincolnshire. So I'll look at that, look back at each individual month, June uh, through August last year, uh, even looking back at the heat waves across Europe. And then what's the drivers? What is going to uh, essentially give me the ideas that I've got? We're looking at the development of the El Nino, the record warm global sea surface temperature profile as well and as well as that there is another little uh, you know kind of caveat to this uh, the wet spring looking at that and also the eruption of that far east uh, russian volcano um, a little bit of a controversial one that but certainly um, it's something that i'm going to consider with regards to the upcoming summer forecast as well so plenty of reason to stick here in my YouTube channel, check out marfoganweather.com, of course, as well. And uh, also, I do encourage you to check out Richie on tour. He's just recently um, uploaded a new video 
um, a, a visit to Glen App Castle. Of course, he just recently bought a hotel up here. So check that out and I'll leave a link in the description below.